Amazon is selling Ouija boards marketed to children and Christians. Also, Disney has more satanic themed, demonic themed kids shows. But don't worry, there is really, really good news that I'm going to celebrate about a decrease in abortions at the end of this episode. So we've got both dark and light to talk about today. Lots to cover. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Good Ranchers. Go to GoodRanchers.com. Use promo code Allie for American meat delivered right to your front door. That's GoodRanchers.com code Allie. Thanks so much for joining us. I only ever bring you on to talk about these very dark subjects. <laughs> Have you noticed that? Uh, yes, it's true. Well, I, I go on Pat Gray show sometimes, too, and it's always about like child grooming or, you know, yeah. some sort of unsolved murder. So I, I like to talk about the happy topics, but sometimes yes. these uh, these just kind of end up coming to the surface. Yes. Well, you're <laughs> a very bright and cheery person, but also you're a mom. I'm a mom. And so you care about what is being advertised for children. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about games. We're talking about shows that have explicit demonic themes that are being marketed to kids. And you presented it to us, to my producer, and you're like, do y'all know that this is going on? So just tell us, tell us kind of what you sent us and what's going on with these different games and shows. Well, first, I love that you talk about these topics because like you said, as a mom, it's something that really concerns me. So I love that you're willing to put this out there and talk about it. I started looking at some things that are being sold on Amazon. I stumbled upon this and was kind of blown away because we've seen the occult sort of be glamorized in TV shows and in books and in movies a lot more recently than it has been in the past. But now they're marketing things in very subliminal ways that even Christians are being fooled by it or people who are maybe looking into faith practices or becoming a Christian or things like that. So there is a Ouija board that they are marketing as a spirit board on Amazon. It's $29.95. It's advertised as a way to communicate directly with Jesus. And the little planchette that you put your hands on when you're using a Ouija board, it's in the shape of a cross. The way they have it marketed is they say it's perfect for churches, prayer groups, or just getting together with oh friends. My goodness. It says, unlike other spirit boards, this one will never contact evil ghosts or demons. So you can ask your questions with an assured sense of safety. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it says, okay, so it's called the Holy Spirit Board by Holy Spirit Games, Christian Religious Talking Board for Seance. And um, as you said, it promises that you can get your life's most important questions answered straight from the man himself while promising it will never contact evil ghosts or demons. And so I don't know, maybe you're a Christian and you think this would be fun for my small group or this might even be fun to give my teenagers. This is a biblical form of connecting with the other world, right? Right. Right. Well, it's scary because there's a lot of things that you can purchase on Amazon and other sites that you think are actually helpful biblical resources or something that will help you in your faith journey. Another thing I came across were these things called Psalm cards, and they're supposed to have the Psalms on there to kind of help you. I'll, I'll read the description. It says they're a source of spiritual inspiration. 150 power verses. And then it says embedded in the ancient Psalm verses are rich images that form a symbolic language. Whether you're searching for answers, insights, or spiritual teachings, pull a card from the deck and allow the image to offer its compelling, succinct message. And then it says, turn to our companion guide for a fuller explanation. Well, so these look like, you know, like when you buy affirmation cards or Bible verse cards that you take with you to kind of study scripture or memorize. These are actually tarot cards or oracle cards, but you wouldn't know that necessarily by looking at the description. So uh, there was one reviewer that was like, I got this and this is not at all what I was expecting because they realized this was something that people are using as an oracle card or a tarot yeah. card. But it's being marketed as something for Christians to know the Psalms, which I thought, you know, there's so many of those things now that are disguised as one thing, but used for something else. And we yes. have to really be on guard with what we're being given, what we're giving to friends, what we're exposing our children to. Yes. But the Ouija board especially, that one, I think, you know, some people are saying, well, they meant this as a parody. But even still, not everyone will know that or see that and will buy that thinking, oh, this is something that I can use to deepen my yeah. my walk with God. And I do think this idea has become popularized even among people who profess to be Christians or maybe who are new to their faith, that there is a Christian way 
to practice what may they might not call it witchcraft but practice kind of um you know psychic readings using tarot cards using ouija boards and they think that this is a um a pure or holy way mm -hmm. to or lightened way to kind of connect with the other world or to engage in paranormal activity not realizing, not fully knowing that this is, as you said, kind of Satan disguising himself as an angel of light. And the problem is even beyond just being deceived. Um, it is that you are opening yourself up to a very real connection with the spiritual world that is not actually of God. And the reason why we know it's not of God is because he actually forbids Mm -hmm. biblically this kind of activity who he, he forbids witchcraft he forbids the use of divination sorcery spiritism um he forbids the use of psychics we can see that in leviticus 26 deuteronomy 18 9 through 14 even first timothy 4 1 it says the holy spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons even those that look like angels of light so there is a really big spiritual eternal consequence that we're talking about here absolutely and i i think that some of the ways that people are getting sort of sucked into this is through instagram and tiktok mm -hmm. and tiktok has so many videos that have some sort of occult theme or they're teaching some form of witchcraft that it's actually called witch talk there's the yes. hashtag witch talk yes, yes. so there were 11 billion views on those videos on tiktok last year and 7 million posts on instagram so that is a lot of content that we're being inundated with. And some of it is disguised as a way for you to grow closer to God. It's not overt, you know, it doesn't yeah. say like, I'm a practicing Satanist or I, you know, I'm a witch. It's something that seems like it's something else. And yeah. we have to be careful. At, on the Ouija board note too, I want to point out when I was searching for the spirit board and just kind of reading what was out there, there is a Ouija board. It's called the kitten board. And this is clearly marketed to small girls. Mm. And it looks just like a cute, fun little board game, but it is actually a Ouija board. And they they have it listed as perfect for cute girls. Wow. And it has kittens and hearts on it and said it would make a great decoration for any bedroom. Wow. So just be careful when you're looking for games for children and you're yeah. on Amazon what you're actually buying because you may be buying something that you don't want in your child's bedroom. <laughs> All right, quick pause to tell you about our first sponsor for the day, and that is Constitution Wealth. So when it comes to investing your money, you want to make sure that the company that you are investing with actually believes in the things that you want to invest in. You don't want investors that are or an investment company that is hostile to the things that you believe in and is going to make it difficult for you to invest in the kinds of things that you really believe in and want to invest in. And that is why Constitution Wealth exists. It's a conservative Christian financial investment firm. They believe that when it comes to investing, personal value should always play a large role in wealth management. And of course, I agree with that. Even Jesus says, uh, where your treasure be, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So where we invest our money really matters. That's why I recommend switching to Constitution Well. So you know that you are working with a company. You're working with people who care about the same things that you do. Go to constitutionwealth.com slash Allie. Schedule a free consultation. You will not regret it. These are just such high quality people. And I'm so glad that they are on our team providing the service for us. So go to constitutionwealth.com slash Allie. Constitutionwealth.com slash Allie. You know, as we were talking about, it does open you up to real demonic activity. It would be one thing if it was just a game that maybe you don't want your kids to play because it's kind of inappropriate or dark, but you really do have the uh, possibility of communicating with demons. We know that God doesn't communicate to us through this kind of medium. He doesn't communicate to us through Ouija boards. So it's not even a question of if you're using one of these, oh, am I hearing from an angel? Am I hearing from God? 
am I hearing from Satan? Thankfully, we know that God is a God of order and peace, not a God of confusion. That's why he gives us his word. So if you want to hear God talk, go to his word um, and you will be able to hear the Lord. If you want to actually hear him, you can read the Bible out loud. But going to a Ouija board, you are you might be connecting with the spirit and it will be a demonic spirit. And Satan is not a respecter of persons. He's not going to say, well, this cute girl is too innocent or she's too young or this is a Christian family or this is, oh no, this this board says Holy Spirit on it. I'm not going to enter through that. Look, Satan is looking for every opportunity. He's prowling around like a lion looking for someone to devour. He doesn't need these board games. I mean, there are lots of different ways, but this is certainly one way that he is looking to try to enter into uh, your life, your child's mind, your home in a variety of ways. So it's very real. Absolutely. And the last time that you let me come on the show, I got to talk about Disney Plus. Well, it's FXX, which is a subsidiary of Disney. Yes. They had a show called Little Demon. It was yes. a cartoon. It was aimed towards adults. It had a lot of satanic themes. It was really glamorizing and glorifying Satanism and the occult graphic violence. There was a huge uproar about it. Uh, One Million Moms and a couple of other organizations started a petition for all of the sponsors to pull their advertising from FXX because of the show. So it looked like the show was going to be canceled. There was all sorts of news about it being canceled. Disney's not bringing it back. Well, now Disney has said it's not canceled. They haven't said whether Mm. or not they're going to release a second season. So they're just not saying anything at the moment. However, they're creating a new show that they're testing out in Germany that's very similar, except for this is not a cartoon. It's a live action TV show called Pauline. And it's about an 18 year old girl who gets pregnant and falls in love with the devil after a one night stand. So Disney well, is testing you know, that little out there. Demon also had an aspect of that. There is at least an implicit sexual aspect to Little Demon because wasn't it that the mom, the human, uh, procreated with yes. Satan to create this little demon. She, so yes. there's also that weird aspect. It's not just, okay, here's, you know, a demonic symbol or here's even a demon or Satan. There's always some kind of sexual interaction, it seems, in yes. these shows. Uh, both of those, Little Demon and Pauline, are both like a coming of age story. And so it's like right around the time that children are sort of, their hormones are raging and they're experimenting with things or they're kind of awakening to who they are. And so they're really focusing on, oh, as they're doing that and they're becoming more sexual, they're also exploring their spirituality and they, they keep mm. kind of interweaving those two things together. So this show, like I said, they're going to test it out in Germany and see how it does. I think they think it's a little too racy for the U.S. market after what they saw with Little Demon. The Germans always, so. <laughs> always at the beginning of the slippery slope, it seems. But, uh, but yeah, so that's supposed to be coming out this year. And then I do have... Some good news. There is a show called Owl House. It's a cartoon that's been on Disney Plus. And this takes place in the Boiling Isles, uh, which was created from the body of a dead god where demons and monsters are an accepted part of society. The heroine's a 14-year-old who stumbles onto a portal to the demonic realm, befriends a witch. And even though she doesn't have any sort of magical powers, she starts to become an apprentice to this witch. Anyway, this is not a children's show. Disney has it rated for ages seven and up, but it has a lot of sexual themes in it as well, along with the the witchcraft and the occult. But I found out it was just canceled on April the 8th. So okay. for parents everywhere, well, ta- I mean, they're that's saying a relief. it's canceled. Maybe in a couple of years, they'll be like, ah. Right. You just don't ever know. But that that was another show that got a lot of backlash. And so the creator said she believes it was canceled because it didn't, quote, fit the Disney brand. But at this point, we don't really know what the Disney brand is anymore. Right. So you just have to be careful when you're looking at even those cartoons that seem so cute and harmless. And this one in particular, Owl House won an award for being uh, creative and innovative as far as children's programming goes in the last year. So, you know, when you see a cartoon is getting a lot of acclaim and getting awards, you think, oh, this is going to be really cute and interesting. That's not always the case. So No, not at all. And as you were saying, the products also that are marketed to kids, I mean, you see a lot of like 
um, astrology type mm-hmm. things that are marketed, especially to young girls. It's almost always to young girls and not to young boys. I think these shows, but also the different toys and the games. And I think it's just because the nature of girls, one, they're a little bit more curious in the spiritual. They're more emotional themselves. Mm-hmm. Also, I think there is a a bigger um a, a, a bigger aspect of social contagion among girls that, okay, if you have three people at a sleepover that are using a Ouija board, there is some pressure by the other girl to say, oh, I want to be a part of that. I want to be included in this. And I think there's also more of a temptation to kind of, I don't know, manifest a different identity through witchcraft or spirituality. And certainly the witch talk that you're talking about is mostly women. It's mostly women who are trying to manifest a better life through a variety of kind of witchy means. Mm -hmm. And some of them are more seemingly innocent than others, like sage burning, the use of crystals for kind of spiritual purposes, um, all kinds of things that I think are seen sometimes is just, well, this is uh, kind of the new age of self-help and self-love, but really do have a, an occultish background. And I think along with that, it's finding a sense of belonging with a group because I, I've i had two personal friends in the last year who suffered a lot of loss in their families and they really were searching for things and both have turned to Wicca to kind of find Mm. a community and a group. And even in this Disney Plus cartoon, they talk about how this main character kind of sets herself up to create a new family through her witchcraft exploration and says, you know, I I don't know what the family situation is in the cartoon, but they talk about her making a new family as she studies witchcraft. And I thought, you know, that really is sort of at the heart of a lot of these things where people just want to feel like they have a place that they belong, where their life makes sense, where they can create the family they want, maybe instead of the family they have. So these sorts of cartoons and games really appeal to that because it gives you a sense of community. A lot mm-hmm. of these are things that you can do with a group. Yeah. It just goes to show that in a post-Christian world, people don't stop worshiping mm-hmm. and they don't stop seeking. They still want to connect to something higher. They still want to believe there's something more than meets the eye. They still want, as you just said, community. But I think um, they believe or they have been deceived into believing that um, Christianity can't offer that because Christianity demands that you give things up, which is actually true. Christianity Mm -hmm. does demand that you give things up. And so I think the message of Christ that you have to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me versus the satanic message of you can worship yourself Mm -hmm. and you can find happiness and fulfillment that way. The same lie that basically he told Eve in the garden today in our hyper individualistic narcissistic society. I think that that message is very attractive. Oh, I can get all of the fruits of spiritualism without having to deny myself anything. And we know that always ends in a dead end. Absolutely. I think that's, I think you're spot on with all of this and that people want to be able to control their outcomes themselves instead of giving their life up to to God and letting him be in control. They want to be able to control it. And these are all different Mm -hmm. ways that they think that they can do that. And it never ends well. All right. Next sponsor is Public S. Q, which is Public Square. This is an app that allows you to connect to businesses, services in your area that align with your values. That's really a common theme when it comes to a lot of my sponsors. They just want to make sure that conservatives, that Christians can go places where they are not ostracized and where their views are not hated. And so if you want to support businesses and people in your area that are supporting the same things that you are, then you should check out the Public Square app. You can go to publicsq.com. That's publicsq.com. Just download the app. Also, if you're a business owner and you want to list your business so that people around you can find it, you can do so. Just sign up, give them your email address. You'll want to put where your location is so you can connect with these local businesses. Such a great service that's really changing the game, changing the economy. So go to publicsq.com, download the app today. That's publicsq.com. There's a huge market for this. And I think a lot of 
Christians are deceived by what is kind of referred to as the new age, which I think is sometimes a gateway into full-on witchcraft because some of it sounds very similar to the self-help stuff Mm -hmm. that we hear, the manifestation. You think something, it can come into being. Basically, you deserve your goals. There's this inner goddess inside of you that you just have to unleash and you'll be able to find and fulfill all of the things that you're searching for. These are new age self-worship, even kind of witchcrafty beliefs that I think even professing Christians have unknowingly taken on. Pew Research did this interesting study to examine what Christians and those who have no religion believe concerning the new age beliefs of things like reincarnation, astrology, psychics, and spiritual energy and objects. That's something that we say a lot. I even will say that, like, I don't like the energy of that. And Mm -hmm. I don't mean it in a new age way. I kind of just mean like, vibe, which is actually also new age, I guess just like the feeling of it, but it has become so colloquial. Um, Most Americans self-identify as Christians, but some still hold one or more new age beliefs. So about 60% of American adults accept at least one of these new age beliefs, reincarnation, astrology, psychics, spiritual energy, and physical objects, 60%. 47 percent of evangelicals accept one of these beliefs almost half wow 70 percent of catholics 70 percent of catholics believe in one of these new age beliefs 70 percent of protestants in the black tradition believe them 56 percent of agnostics 80 percent of people whose religion is nothing in particular adults under the age of 65 those who have not graduated from college racial and ethnic minorities and democrats are more likely to hold at least one new age belief. Isn't that interesting? I think, and it's it's both shocking and not shocking at the same time, because I think because we have these sorts of programs, and you and I have talked about this before offline, about how a lot of these TV shows or games have been around for a long time. And, yes. you know, you're exposed to it little by little over time, and then you become desensitized, or you think, oh, it's not that bad, or it's harmless, or, it, you know, it's not that big of a deal. And I think that is why so many professing Christians are like, well, I mean, horoscopes is just kind of a silly, fun thing. Yeah. Or, you know, going to a psychic, oh, that's just something silly and fun we did, you know, for a a birthday. But they do still sort of believe, well, it could be real or, you know, maybe this person has a gift from God. And it's because we've been so conditioned to see it and hear it and and get used to the language that it suddenly doesn't seem like that big of a deal anymore. Yeah. And I do think that's why it's important to kind of keep an eye on what's going on with our TV shows or our games or our books, because the more of it we allow in the more normal it becomes. And then yeah. suddenly the things that are good and are right and are pure don't seem important anymore. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I, yeah. And it just causes fear, I think, in our kids too. That's what we were talking mm-hmm. about right before the show, that this isn't new. Maybe the explicit satanic symbolism is newer. Like you see people like Sam Smith or Lil Nas X. I mean, they're just explicitly dressing up like a caricature of Satan. I mean, I don't think Satan really does have hooves and a pitchfork, but still they're not ashamed of it. I do think that that is somewhat new, although maybe the the rockers of the 80s were kind of like that too, but certainly marketed towards children. And people made fun of your, you know, Southern Baptist grandma in the 80s who took that kind of stuff seriously and really cared about the content that their kids and grandkids were consuming. But now that we've grown up, I'm like, oh, yeah, I think my parents were right that I shouldn't have been watching Are You Afraid of the Dark? (laughs) I'm aging myself, the 90s. Um, So weird. That was something that was on Disney. Even some of those like original movies that Disney put out, a lot of them were cute and wholesome by today's standards. But some of them were just scary. And because I wasn't allowed to watch them, but, you know, I had two older brothers. And so sometimes I would watch things that I wasn't supposed to. And I would be laying in bed, you know, probably five years old, scared because I just watched Are You Afraid of the Dark? And I'm like, yes, I am. I'm scared of these ghosts actually, you know, coming to my room. But I didn't want to tell my parents because I knew that I wasn't allowed to watch it. And then if I confess that that was why I was scared, then that was no good. And so that's also just something that we don't want to give our children. If we can protect them as much as we can, we don't want to fill them with the anxiety that comes from that kind of content, right? Absolutely. They're only little ones and you want them to be able to enjoy their childhood and not lay in in bed in fear at night because of something they've seen on YouTube or on TV. And, you know, not all of it's bad. A lot of the shows have 
little things, you know, that maybe seem occultist or have themes. Like I was telling you, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, sometimes Minnie dresses up as a witch. Yeah. And, you know, there there are some of those shows where it's not overt and we can't police every single thing. But you're right. Like just being able to kind of have a handle on what's out there and, and be cognizant of it and not allow them to just watch yeah. YouTube or YouTube Kids where it's just streaming constantly. Yeah. Because we don't know. And, you know, the people who are getting upset about what books kids are reading in school – we do need to monitor what's out there. We do need to protect their minds. We do need to know what they're reading and what teachers are, are talking about in the classroom. That's important. It was important 100 years ago. It's important today. Yeah. You know, all the people who watch Sabrina the Teenage Witch are now growing up and they're making, I know, and you watched Bewitched too. I don't think I re- watch that but there are all those vampire shows that we watched oh, the yeah. books that we read there was a lot of dark stuff i even remember like watching beetlejuice beetlejuice is also very dark some of the like uh is it what's what's that what, what's that kind of like uh like nightmare before christmas type stuff who's who's the guy oh, who, um, uh tim burton tim burton yes. i almost said tim horton but i think that's a coffee brand in canada <laughs> um Anyway, so that kind of stuff was also dark. And so we did grow up with a little of that. And now, and I think we would like to say, well, we turned out fine. One, you know, maybe it did negatively affect us then, but also like, okay, well now our generation is the one creating all of this smut. That's, oh, that's a great point. Cause yeah, I read all the like goosebumps and like yes. all the R.L. Stein and yeah. Yes. And I didn't hey, think it was a big deal as a kid, but you're scary. right. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> like some of them really were scary. Yeah. And you know, I think age appropriate is also what's important. Cause I feel like they've changed the standards for what's age appropriate. What was rated R when I was a kid yeah. is now PG. Right. It's just crazy how they've changed the standard. But children's brains are still developing the same way. You know, so I I don't know. I don't always go by what, like, Disney Plus saying this Owl House cartoon was okay for 7 Plus. Well, yeah. clearly it's not. Clearly it's not. So, And kids are little sponges. Like, I just even notice with with my kids the things that they repeat the things that they say and you think when they're young well they're not going to remember this this doesn't affect them because I don't remember things from when I'm three but you don't realize how everything that you're consuming especially at that age is becoming formative for you yes a hundred percent it's just being embedded in their little minds so yeah And so it's so important for us to know about this stuff. I wouldn't have known about it if you hadn't pointed it out. So thank you for pointing it out. As always, Christians just need to be discerning. And God is so gracious that he has given us his word. And so if you're looking for answers, if you're looking for fulfillment, if you're looking to connect to something bigger than you, God gives us that through Christ and through his word. And so that's a wonderful privilege. And we don't actually have to worry when we open up the word that we are communicating with some kind of dark force, but only what is good and right and true. Absolutely. It's the only place we need to look. Yep. Thanks so much, (laughs) Hillary. I appreciate it. Where can people follow you and find you and all that good stuff? I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Hillary Kennedy, and it's just Hillary with one L. Hillary with one L. Thanks, Mom, for making that tough for everybody. (laughs) And she does the four-minute buzz for Glenn, and you're a... You're a guest on a lot of shows too. So, and maybe you'll see her on a random commercial like I do sometimes when I'm traveling the country and I look up and I'm like, there's Hillary. <laughs> I do like to do the occasional commercial. Sonic, yes. America's drive-in. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So if you recognize her, that's probably why. Thank you so much, Hillary. Yeah, I appreciate for it. Me on. All right. Let me tell you about Eden Pure. You want to make sure that the air that you're breathing in your home is clean and you want to get rid of all of those bad odors that maybe you're smelling. Maybe it's pet odor. Maybe it's dirty diapers. Maybe you just moved into a house and they had dogs or they smoked cigarettes and you don't want to smell that. You just want to make sure that your air is actually breathable. Get rid of those odors. Get rid of the viruses and the bacteria that like to hang on to the molecules in the air by using Eden Pure. They use O3 technology to make sure that your air is purified, getting rid of all the pollutants in your home and actually destroying them. Right now, you can save $200 on an Eden Pure Thunderstorm three pack for whole home protection. So you get three units. You just plug it right into the wall. It doesn't take any floor space um, for under $200. That's a really good deal because the price of these kind of air purifiers is really high. So you're saving a lot of money. So three units for under $200 Go to EdenPureDeals.com, put in discount code Allie 
discount code Allie to save that $200. EdenPureDeals.com, code Allie, EdenPureDeals.com, code Allie. Okay, so Christians must be on guard. I don't have to tell y'all who are listening to this podcast that things are dark and things are evil out there, but remember that... As we said yesterday, God's work doesn't always make headlines. His eternal plan of redemption is always going off without a hitch. All things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose, Romans 8, 28. And he is still in the business as ever of saving lives, of redeeming souls. And he is going to accomplish his purposes. And sometimes we have to dig deep for the good, redemptive, beautiful, life-giving things that are happening because they are happening on a daily basis. And he uses graciously Christians to be ambassadors of that goodness, of that light, and of um, his life-saving purposes. And one of the ways that I love to see Christians being used in such magnificent and miraculous ways is in the saving the lives of unborn children and caring for their moms and dads. And thankfully, because of the hard work, mostly of Christians, they're pro-lifers of all different kinds of religious backgrounds, but the vast majority of people who are anti-abortion in this country are Christians, follow Jesus. And so because of the hard and persistent work, both in the public and the private sphere of this group, we saw after 49 years of basically unfettered bloodshed of these preborn children, the overturning of Roe v. Wade, the Dobbs decision last year, which then allowed states to enact very strong restrictions against abortion. And we didn't know exactly what the result would be. All we heard from the media was that women are going to die. Women are going to die because of this. And we've talked about this in depth. We've debunked a lot of those stories, a lot of those talking points. We can link some of those past episodes. We don't have time to get into all of that right now. But we also knew and hoped that this would save the lives of image bearers of God, that this would prevent these young children, these babies from going to the slaughter. And according to CNN, that is exactly what has happened. So they reported last week that 32 There were 32,000 fewer abortions in the United States six months after Dobbs. Like, let's just stop right there. 32,000. 32,000 human beings that are going to be here on earth. Maybe more than that, because in some of these cases, you're pro- you might be talking about twins. You might be talking about triplets. That would count as one abortion, but that would obviously count as two or three image bearers of God. So at least 32,000 human beings are here on earth, are saved because of a law that was passed in Mississippi that made its way to the Supreme Court and that caused the Dobbs decision to be decided by justices who were appointed over a span of 30 years but by, I believe, five different presidents. And all of this was put into place by pro-lifers who were persistent and who were consistent in their fight on behalf of unborn children. And so now, because of this Dobbs decision, 32,000 fewer abortions were performed in six months. That's of 32,000 children who were saved, or at least 32,000 children who were saved from poisoning in the first trimester, poisoning and dismemberment in the second trimester, second trimester um, towards the end of it, and then towards the third trimester that involves um, forcing the baby into cardiac arrest using the same chemical combination that is used in the lethal injection of murders on death row to make sure that that baby dies inside the womb as it tries to wiggle away from the point and the pain of the needle containing that deadly chemical combination. And then that baby is dismembered and brought out of the womb. There were babies who were saved, who were saved from that fate because of the decision by the Supreme Court and because the laws that have been enacted in conservative states. Praise God. Christian, this is why politics matter. This is why politics matter. What do we say so often? Politics matter because policy matters because people matter. That's an alliteration that we came up with on this show that we talk about so much because it is so incredibly true. 
the Christians who say we shouldn't get involved in politics, we shouldn't be involved in the culture war because it's too divisive, it's too uh, worldly. We don't want to get our hands dirty with that. We don't have to. We don't want to have to read up about the complicated, uh, complex issues. None of that matters. Jesus is coming back. We don't care about the right or the left or Democrats or Republicans or voting or elections because we know Jesus is in charge. Yes, Jesus is in charge. Yes, he's coming back. Yes, there will one day be a world without any partisanship, without any politics where we won't have to vote. We won't have to worry about abortion. We won't have to worry about drag queen story hour. We won't have to worry about all of these things, but we occupy the here and the now and God did not place us here arbitrarily. If he did not want us to occupy the here and the now and all the spheres of the world um, that are that are embedded in a society, then he would have kept us in heaven. He wouldn't have given us these bodies. He wouldn't have placed us on this tiny speck of eternity on which he placed us. But just like in Jeremiah 29, where we see the uh, the exiles of Israel in Babylon and where God tells them, look, dwell where you are. Seek the welfare of the city in which I have placed you as exiles. Christians are exiles in this world. God has placed us providentially, purposely to be where we are and when we are. We are to seek the welfare of the city, of the country in which God has placed us one way Not the only way, but one way to do that is through politics. And look, for us, abortion, the reality of male and female, the definition of marriage and the family, while the world may call these political and culture war issues, for the Christian, they're not. For the Christian, they're not. They're primarily biblical issues. Yes, they become cultural and political. That's okay. They're moral. There are even philosophical questions about them. But primarily for the Christian, they're biblical issues. They're theological issues. These are issues that Christians have cared about far before the creation of the American political system, far before the forging of Western civilization. These are issues that Christians have cared about since the beginning of the church. And these are issues that we still care about today because they're biblical issues. They're Genesis issues. They're Genesis 1 issues. They're actually Genesis 1, 1 issues. God created the heavens and the earth. If God created the heavens and the earth and he's the authority over all of it, he says what is and what isn't, what's right and what's wrong, what's good and what's bad, what's good and what's evil, what's false and what's true. He says when life begins, he says what life is valuable. He says what male and female is. And there is not a realm in all of the earth over which he does not have ultimate authority. That includes the political realm. So yes, how we vote, how we engage in these issues is a part of submitting to the authority of God, who is the creator of all things. We don't get to compartmentalize any part of our lives or any part of the universe away from our faith or away from God. A worldview is supposed to be total. And if we believe the first verse of the first chapter of the Bible, that is going to affect how we think and what we do about everything, how we vote, how we talk, the issues that we advocate for. Go down a little bit more. You'll see Genesis 127. That answers most of the controversial culture war questions that people have today for the Christian. That God created us male and female in his image. He created us. In his image, he created us male and female female. That answers the question about what gender is. That answers the question about what a marriage is. That answers the question about the value of human life. We are made in God's image different than any other creature creation on earth. Done. We see what we should think about abortion, about gender, about the family. The foundation is right there in the first chapter of the first book of the Bible. And when when we submit to God's authority in these things, we see lives saved because God's way is always better. God's way is always better. All right. Remember, guys, you need to go out and check out Nefarious. It's produced. It was written by my friend Steve Dace, my fellow Blaze TV host, whom I've had on the show several times. And this movie is uh, like a modern day screw tape letter showing the dark reality of good and evil that's manifesting itself and things that maybe we don't see as a part of the spiritual struggle, like all of these political and so-called culture wars that we're talking about, abortion, for example. I mean, this is a depiction of 
the demonic. And so just understand it's dark and disturbing, but this is a great show to bring your friends to as well because it's not quite as explicit as maybe some other Christian movies, but it definitely will start a conversation with them about faith and about the bigger things that are going on beyond what we can see. And so this is a great way, I think, to fight the spiritual battle that is going on, seeing this movie, supporting it, and also bringing your friends. Go to whoisnefarious.com. When you do that, you'll see the trailer. It'll also tell you where you can buy tickets, where it's playing. It should be playing in a local theater near you. That's where I saw it, and it was really good. I was disturbed, but it was really good. So go check it out, whoisnefarious.com, whoisnefarious.com. Okay, let me finish a little bit more about what CNN said. There were about 5,000 fewer abortions each month on average than there were in the months before the ruling, a drop of about 6%. And the 13 states that enacted bans following Dobbs abortions fell by more than 95%, with just a few reported each month from July to December. Praise God, praise God. There were more than 8,500 telehealth abortions in December, more than double compared to April. So there is that. There is that, that women are still seeking abortions. Women who want abortions are may cross state lines. That's all true. And that's still tragic. But yes, we want to make it as difficult as possible to murder a child. And so even though I am not happy, I am not glad that a woman can cross state lines and get someone to kill her child. I still want it to be as difficult as possible for someone to do that in these red states. That is absolutely just. States with the largest declines in the number of abortions during the six-month period after the Dobbs decision compared to baseline, Texas, Georgia, Tennessee, Ohio, Arizona, Louisiana. And then there were also states where there were significantly more abortions, Florida, Illinois, because, you know, Florida just enacted that six-week ban, has a lot of exceptions, but did enact a six-week ban. Prior to that, I think it was 15 weeks. Prior to that, not too long ago, I, I believe it was just last year that it became 15 weeks. And then before that, I'm pretty sure it was 24. Um, it was a very liberal state for abortion. And so uh, 7,190 more abortions in Florida and more in Illinois, North Carolina, Colorado, and Michigan. So we see that abortion restrictions work. That doesn't mean that we don't care about the well-being of the mother. That doesn't mean that we don't believe that we shouldn't save her life when that is needed. I believe that the mother and the child should get all of the medical care possible in order to save and protect both of them. We understand that unfortunately early delivery is sometimes necessary to save the life of the mother. And in that process, the baby might die. We just don't believe in intentionally killing a child inside the womb because both of those lives matter. God believes that both of those lives matter. And as far as after birth, I don't want to hear that Christians are only pro-birth. Yes, we're pro-birth. I think that's better than being anti-birth, by the way, even if we were to stop there. But Christians don't stop there. Christians have been doing the work that pro-choice activists say needs to be done before we can really be pro-life for years and years and years, really since the inception of the church, but certainly since Roe v. Wade in the 70s, the pregnancy centers that provide all of the uh, all of the resources that meet all of the needs that this mother, that these families could have, they have existed for a very long time. If you're concerned that there's not enough work being done for these women in crisis who find themselves with surprise pregnancies, why don't you just take a second to look up your local pregnancy center, show up there today, see what money you can give, see what time you can give. I promise, I promise that they will put these things to good use. So rather than just complaining about work that's not being done, why don't you be a part of the solution as many Christians have been for years and years. So thank you, God. Thank you, God, for saving these lives. I pray for the lives of these image bearers. I pray that they would know Christ and the power of his resurrection. I pray that they would make a beautiful and positive impact on the space that they occupy. Their lives are not a mistake. Their lives might be hard. They might be poor. They might be with parents who did not expect them and do not want them. That doesn't mean that they don't deserve to live. They do because they are image bearers of God just as much as the rest of us. So Praise God. Praise God for the work that he's doing. I just wanted to close out on a on a positive note. All right. Uh, thanks so much for listening. Tomorrow we will be with James Lindsay. So we had to reschedule that from last week. Oh man, we've got so much to cover. So many of the things that you've that you guys have been asking me to cover. Um, we are finally going to get to tomorrow. That Washington, that horrible uh Washington law that is now saying that. 
kids can be taken away from their parents if they want a gender transition and their parents don't support it. The UN pushing to decriminalize child rape. They call it sexual interaction between an adult and a minor, but we know what that really is. We're going to be uncovering all of that, what's really going on, and we're finally going to be talking about the Bud Light controversy, too. And uh, James Lindsay is going to break it all down for us. We might also talk about a few of our disagreements. So it'll be good. It'll probably be two parts because I always have a lot to say with James Lindsay. Um, So that's all I got for today. Thanks so much for listening. Leave a five-star review if you love this show. Appreciate you guys. See you back here tomorrow.